In this video we're going to look at the factors that affect solubility and to understand this let's first look at a couple of key words. The first word is soluble. A soluble substance is a substance that can dissolve. Examples of soluble substances include things such as sugar and salt. Insoluble describes a substance that cannot dissolve. An example of this might be sand, for example. And you'd notice the difference because the soluble substances could make a solution and if you dissolved them in the solvent, you would not be able to see that substance anymore. Whereas an insoluble substance would just sit at the bottom of the beaker and it would not dissolve into the liquid around it. Solubility describes how much solute can be dissolved in a fixed volume of water. And if you remember, the solute is the solid substance. So you could have something with a low solubility, meaning that not a lot of it will dissolve in a fixed volume of water. Or you could some have something with a high solubility, where lots more of the solute will dissolve in a fixed volume of water. As an example of this, we can compare the solubility of sugar versus salt. Salt has a low solubility compared to sugar. At room temperature, it will dissolve approximately 36 grams per 100 millilitres of water. If we compare this to sugar, sugar will dissolve just over 200 grams of sugar in 100 millilitres of water. So we would describe the salt as having a low solubility because much less can dissolve per 100 mils and we describe the sugar as having a high solubility. A saturated solution is a solution that contains the maximum amount of solute that can dissolve. You will notice a saturated solution because if you keep adding solute into the solvent eventually you will see the excess collect at the bottom of the beaker. If it starts to do this it means that no more can dissolve in that volume of the solvent. So excess solute or excess solid lying on the bottom of the beaker shows you that your solution is saturated and no more can dissolve. You can show the solubility of different substances on a graph. For example this graph shows the solubility of potassium chloride. You've got solubility on the y-axis and you've got temperature on the x-axis. So you see the solubility increases with temperature. Let's say we were dissolving this in a hundred millilitres of water. As you heat up the water you'll be able to dissolve more potassium chloride. You may need to read off of this graph. For example, if a question said, what is the solubility at 20 degrees C, you would have to draw a line from 20 degrees C to your graph and then draw another line across. And where this line intersects, you can read off the graph. So the solubility at 20 degrees would be 34 grams per 100 mils of water. This is a different graph, this time to show the solubility of sodium chloride. And don't worry that it's a curve, you can do exactly the same thing by reading off of a graph. For example, if it said what is the solubility of sodium chloride at 85 degrees, you would find 85, draw a line up to the graph and across and read that off. You need to be able to work out the scale of an axis and work out that this particular graph is going up in point twos. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 would take you up. So for this answer, at 85 degrees C, the solubility of sodium chloride is 38.2 grams per 100 mils of water. So much less than the potassium chloride we looked at. You may also see more complicated graph like this, whereby they have both solutes shown by different coloured lines, the red for sodium chloride here and the orange for potassium chloride here. B 
but these graphs are really useful to compare the solubility of the two substances. And you can see that between 0 and 25 degrees, the sodium chloride is actually more soluble than the potassium chloride. But after this point, things change and the potassium chloride has a higher solubility. You can dissolve much more of that in 100 millilitres of water than you can the sodium chloride. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video, then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at gccrevisionmonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at sciencesurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.